guys, welcome back. He's finally arrived from Japan. So excited for this, so excited, so excited, so excited. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to be looking at this with you for the first time. So we'll be doing this together. Let's have a quick look around the box. Uh, this has come direct, oh, you can see my reflection, hello. Uh, this come direct from Japan. Um, it was officially released a couple of weeks ago, and it's cost me less than twenty pound. Ooh! Hopefully, you get your backer with this. Looks like you get a couple of commanders. Um, so yeah, it's it's come direct from Japan. Hobbylink. Uh, dot com, I think it was. So we've got an ATST in one forty eight scale. I really need to work on my intros, but I'm too giddy and too excited. And at the moment, I genuinely don't know if this is going to be a traditional Bandai snap together kit or whether it's going to be a more traditional kit in the sense that you have to glue everything together and paint it and things like that yourself. Let's see if we can get a close up on these. So it looks like we're going to get some blaster type clear parts. I'm hoping that base isn't as tacky as it looks on the picture. I may have to repaint that. It looks like stunning detail in that cockpit there. So, let's get that off. See what we have. Oh my. You get a mini Chewbacca. Fantastic is that? I'll tell you what. 48 scale. That Chewbacca is huge. And there's the pilot. Face. Look at him! He's huge! That cap is real, surely. Hmm. So, just looking round these frames as they are. Crankly plastic. It's noisy as hell. The Stormtrooper, haha, <laughs> which is made in very, very shiny ABS plastic. Uh, let's see if we can get some reflection on that white there. Just about make out the shine from the other light there. It's ridiculously shiny plastic. This stuff is more like traditional uh, model kits. Ooh, that's a bit wobbly. So you get flexible vinyl type plastic again, like we did with the. There we go. Like we did with the Stormtrooper. That is tacky as hell. That's very 70s. But, um, yeah, we can work with that. We can do some proper landscaping effects and stuff like that. There's the clear parts for. The laser blasts out of the front cannons. There's all kinds of gimbals and stuff like that. I say, there's the pilot. And a ridiculously tall Chewbacca at the side of him. And that's the same scale. I know two is tall, but he's not that tall, surely. Some more crinkly plastic. Sorry about the noise. Ridiculously crinkly. Look at that. So it looks like I'll be able to do some proper painting on this one, which I'm terrified to do with this fella. Um, just because of how shiny he is, to be honest. Yeah, I can work with that. Ooh. It's got feet parts. Just glancing around this, I can actually make out um, kit bash parts like the ILM guys would have done originally to start with. That's definitely a Soviet type hatch from a tank. I'm not too sure which one. Possibly a T62. 
does look familiar. More bits and bobs. Let's see what we do here. So in traditional Bandai style, we have stickers or transfers to use. I like that blast mark. That's very effective. However, I shall be doing a proper blaster mark. Hopefully I can uh, talk you through how I do that. Ooh. Let's be careful with this. Yep, that's fallen off already. Never mind. Uh, beautifully detailed interior. That's gorgeous. You can get some proper washes in there as well. So, yes, I can paint this properly. Let's all look at the instructions in a moment. I can't tell. Oh, that's a great noise. Um, I can't tell if this is snapped together or glue yet. That's gorgeous detail. Look at this. I can see engine gearboxy type things from a Porsche by the look of it. It's possibly a tank wheel or I don't know, some kind of air filter off a tank. A German tank, I think. That's absolutely gorgeous detail. Ooh, I recognise these. I used to have this kit. Um, it's a Tamiya flak veiling shield. I recognise you. Absolutely stunning detail, it really is. Right then. Knows the instruction ends. Where's step one? Where's step one? Usual blur about. Make sure you got the right part numbers. Clipping from the frames. Be careful not to trim tabs off that you shouldn't do. Um, what else do we have? So it does look like it's a snap fit. Go on off that. Yeah, it does like a snap fit. You can tell by the lugs and pins on that one. So you drop that in there and then this piece goes over the top and stuff like that. So yeah. Can't see anything on there that says gloomy. Cool. Right then. I'm gonna go away, make a brew. get this built and painted and then stuff like that. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Hi friendly friends, it's me again with another Bandai kit which is this fellow here. Um, hopefully you've just seen a little slideshow type thing of photos I did or took even so, you know it's one of those days today mouth and brain don't work together it's odd um, yeah there should have been a little photo slidey show thing just then Woo, steady um, to show the build that I did a couple of weeks ago now um, real life and work and stuff like that got in the way so I did the quick build just because it was there and it needed to and, 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 and things like that and a 48 scale Chewbacca how cool is that with emo hair um, so now it's time for the, the strip down and painting it and 
things like that. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick tour around the pieces as well. Was it on there? Is that was kit bash from a brake caliper off a racing car of some type? Originally, it's brilliant. Just walking around, you can see different bits and bobs um, from other kits. What was the other one? That's all. And to make a liar of me, I can't find any of them at the moment. I'll probably point them out as I go along. There's certainly bits that you'll recognise off all the kits. It's like this, it's been adapted from some kind of tank hatch to start with. It's the hatch that goes on top. That though. So it's been adapted from another tank hatch at some point anyway. And it's just bits and bobs everywhere and you, you look at it and you think, ooh, I know that. So, I'll stop waffling and I'll start painting. Finally! And just to stop filming, I spot a piece that I could have shown you. That is the... Oh, dog's getting shouted at again. That's the the shield from a flak veiling cannon which goes underneath this main body part here. Now I'm having trouble with this piece, it won't stay in. It's like it's knocking it falls out, he's making a liar of me again now. <laughs> but um oh there you go. That's from flak veiling, and if you look at the back end of a speeder bike from the same film. That's actually the little flappy up thing that helps steer one. So it just shows you the old kits are the best and all that kind of stuff. And stop waffling, start painting. Right, on it. Okie dokie dokie dokie. Right then, so for primary pur <coughs> clear the throat. Primary purposes, I'm going to be using this pot here of XF20 simply because I've got a load of it knocking about. Uh, I've seen so I've. Couple of tin spare, and it's nothing scientific. It's literally dribble or load in, and then roughly half and half with thinner, which is good old X20A. That top is off this fella here. And it's a perfect fit with. These tops. I just find it a little bit easier. Uh, some people use pipettes. I've used pipettes in the past with varying degrees of success. Where's my little mixy brush? I've got a new table, and that's one of the things that I've had to stop and get sorted out. Is get the table in and get everything set up around it, and it's I can't find anything at the moment. Hmm. Just bear with me. I'll find my brush. Okay, look. Not quite the brush I was looking for, but it'll do. See, a long, long time ago, when I wore a camouflage uniform, I was 15, 16, something like that, one of the instructors that we had at the time told us about the 7Ps. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. This video is not being planned at all, whatsoever, in any way, shape or form. Can you tell? It's wonderful stuff. Right then. Let's get some of this blue rag down so we're not... Painting everything. Normally, I'll do this in the spray booth, but at the moment, like I say, I'm trying to figure everything out because my spray booth is now all the way over here. Hold up, like that. It's all, yeah, so I've got to figure it all out yet. So, oh dear. I'm figuring my camera's set up as well. It's all new, it's all on the go, it's all on the change. Right then. Little glovey, little glovey, 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 so I'm painting my hand again. Alright, and as always, a quick test to make sure everything's working. Spitty, spitty, spitty. And it's Typically, I'm having airflow problems. I hate my job. 
Harry sign. There we go. Right then. Seems to be having spitting problems. This airbrush is just um, a cheap and nasty one for about 15 quid off eBay. So it's nothing special. I guess the job done. I'm not looking for anything fancy here, it's just a very, very general light mist coat. You can hear me. If not, I'll be doing a separate voiceover. <laughs> and so I'm not looking at laid loads and loads of paint down. It's just literally get a quick dust coat on. And we can sort that out again at a later stage. Normally this would be done outside with um, a rattle can of Tamiya Primer, super fine primer I think it is. The biggest problem I've got at the moment is the grey I'm using is a very very similar shade to the grey of the plastic. too sure that that's going to come out camera to be honest but if it does it does if it doesn't well you'll see the contrast when I start doing appreciating so it's literally just give everything a quick coat we're not looking to lay loads of paint down we're not looking to fill any crevices or anything like that Hopefully by now you got the general idea. So I'll do a quick time warpy thing and hopefully show you everything else in fast forward. See you in a minute. detail of the rear of that cabin is absolutely immaculate. I can't wait to start painting this properly. Uh, even though you won't be able to see it because it's all buttoned up. Uh, I'll know it's there, you know it's there, because you'll see me doing it. Um, hopefully I can talk you through that process properly. Where's the, uh, the dashboard? Dashboard, dashboard, dashboard. Dashboard is absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful. Absolute don't need detail, really is. Remember this is 48 scale. That's the sidewalls. Look at that checker. I mean in person, I'm hoping the shadows show up properly in this now. But uh, in person, it's quite a deep groove. <coughs> quite deep lining. It's going to look gorgeous with the washing there. It really is. I can't wait to get started on that part. Um, where else have we got? Spotted something else. And I've lost where it was. Word of warning though, when you come to do this, it is um, a push fit. 
snap together in a typical Bandai style. Be very, very careful when you come to build this cannon of these parts breaking off. I've actually broke that part off and had to re-glue it. You can tell it's on a bit of a wonk. So I might actually take that back off and actually drill into this part here and see if I can fit it in that way. That's the only real complaint I've got about the kit. Um, where's that cannon? The chin cannon as well. Uh, comes in the under the chin part there. Attached with this bracket here to hold it. And you can probably see there it's a huge panel line where the two halves of the support piece join together. So I'm actually going to fill that in um, and possibly glue over it as well. See if we can get rid of it that way. So I'll show you that part in a few minutes. Yeah. Definitely needs filling. It's definitely an eyesore. I hate it when that happens. You think you've made the camera go boop and start working and it's not. There we go, right then. Hopefully you can see that. I'm literally just going to take the glue from the pot. You can see the pot just down here. Um, I've got most of the excess and I'm literally just going to run a line across there to soften the plastic a little bit and then give it a bit of a squish. Hopefully I can get a, a bead of plastic popping out. Just about pick out the bead there at the top corner. Give it a squish. There's no better filler than the plastic itself, I find. So I'll run another bead across that. Soften the plastic a little bit more again. Give it another squish. Okay, so it's slowly disappearing. And this way as well, you don't have to use masses of filler. Can you tell I've been naughty and I glue painted parts? <coughs> it's naughty, don't do it. And give that another squish. Right, I'll leave that aside for about half an hour. Let the glue, the glue, glue, glue. Oh dear. Talking is hard. Anywho, that base there is the tackiest piece of plastic I've ever, ever seen in my life. Um, in the instructions, it does show. Just instructions, those instructions. It does show that you can paint it. But even that, by Bandai standards, is quite shocking, yeah, to be honest. So, we're not going to do that. We're going to do some of my old. Desktop wargaming type finish on this at some point. I will tackle that in a separate video, I think. But that is oh, it's just wrong. It works. It's very functional. You see the hole and the pin and spoon jar jar spoon, and on it goes. And it is actually quite functional as a base. But it just looks shocking. Ah. Sorry about that, I was rudely interrupted by a dog incoming. So, yeah, it's a very functional base, but it looks wrong. Um, so, I'll probably prime that, and then use some PVA glue and some sand and dust and soil and things like that from outside, another layer of PVA. Prime it again and throw it all over the place. Um, like I say, I'll tackle that in a separate video. Most likely. Right then. Stop faffing about with that. Leave that alone for half an hour. I'm going to carry on doing this kind of thing um, with the priming. I'm not going to film the rest of it. You hopefully get the idea of it by now. It's not a tutorial. It's more of a a giddy giddy fanboy thing, this video. Um, I'll see you in a few minutes.